In the last few videos, we've put together the skeleton of an app for making donations to our local zoo, in the form of buying penguin snacks. Looking at the UI we've developed so far, there's at least one element that's still conspicuously missing. Prices. How much will it cost us to sponsor a meal for any of these penguin species? We already have a feeding option abstraction, which we could easily add a price field to. But before we do that, we need to think about where the prices should come from. And that turns out to be a very important question for the architecture of our app. What is the simplest possible architecture that might support our donation app? Well, we could simply have the app submit credit card charge requests directly to the Square payment APIs. Let's think about what this would mean for our mobile app. What kind of information would have to reside on each and every user's mobile device? We'd have the list of penguins, the pricing information, and the secret app key that authorizes our organization to make credit card charges using the Square APIs. What are some of the drawbacks of putting all this information in the mobile client? Here are just a few. Let's talk about that secret key to start with. We would probably do our best to encrypt it in our application packages. But once we start distributing that secret key to thousands of user devices, we lose our ability to keep it secure. If just one combination of device and operating system has a bug enabling an attacker to extract our key, they could use it to impersonate us and make credit card charges. It's also very likely that we'll want to regularly update our list of penguins as the zoo's collection evolves, as well as updating the price of donations to reflect market changes in fish prices. If the list of penguin feeding options resides in the mobile app, those changes will only be propagated when people update their mobile device software. That's not ideal. There's another security consideration here as well. Even if we manage to keep our Square app key secret on user devices, an attacker still might find a way to proxy and alter requests to charge more or less than the price we set. So long as the source of truth for credit card charge amounts is the mobile app, this is a vulnerability. When we take all these considerations into account, it starts to look less and less practical to make our mobile app be in charge of the feeding options and making credit card charges. But if not in the app, then where should those responsibilities live? Let's add a third element to our architecture, a back-end web service, that will act as a source of truth for penguin feeding options and their prices, as well as being in charge of charging cards using our Square secret app key. Now, what's a quick way to spin up a back-end service like this? Let's use an AWS Lambda function. That way, we don't have to worry about provisioning infrastructure, and we can jump straight into writing code for our back-end. We'll start at the AWS console, then go to the Lambda homepage. We'll click Create Function, choose Author from Scratch, we'll give our function a name, choose a Python runtime, and click Create Function. When we scroll down, we can see that Lambda has started us out with some basic Hello World code. By itself, this function is not yet connected to the outside world. Let's make it respond to HTTP requests by adding a trigger. We choose the type API Gateway and tell it to create a new one. We choose the REST type, choose Open Security for now, and click Add. Now we can see our API Gateway connected as a trigger to our function. If we make sure the gateway is selected and scroll down, the console shows us the URL we can use to access our new Lambda function. Let's test this with an HTTP GET request using curl. And there's our hello message, which means we've successfully deployed and triggered our Lambda function. In the next video, we'll flesh out our new backend service and start to use it as the source of our penguin list. See you soon! Mm -hmm.